All right, very well. Oh. All right. So art, technology, and language are built upon rationality and proportion. All three utilize logic, technique, and interpretation as methods of making their point and transmitting their ideas. Anthropomorphism is applied and expressed in each of these realms. And in fact, the phenomenon can serve to tie them together. When we see images such as this, they look ridiculous, kind of absurd. I think it's important to recognize that they help us to examine our beliefs and our perceptions. The greater part of art is comprised of completed works. Unfinished elements are in the interpreter's minds. With the exception of works that are in progress, I think this generally holds true. And anthropomorphization intensifies the effect of art. Some animals are anthropomorphized and seem quite friendly and helpful. Others seem terrifying. It's this confluence of the unknown with the known that I think inspires these varied experiences. The self and other being unified through interiority. We see these images and they incite an interior experience. Of course, with anthropomorphic art, a greater variety of influences are drawn from. And greater expressive range is possible both for the viewer and the artist. The greater part of science is never complete. It is always in a state of verisimilitude. The models that are used are true for the moment, for the state of knowledge as it exists. It is always in a state of development. Now, technology is crafted by interpreting scientific principles and the regularities known as laws into useful forms. I think this illustrates very well that art and technology are inextricably bound. Technology, again, being needed to interpret the present state of knowledge. The self and other are unified through exteriority. We use a piece of technology and it mediates our experience with the external world. Transforming materials and energy as needed is something that all biological units do. But humans have a special way of doing it. A unique way of transforming materials and energies. We can enter into social relationships with anthropomorphized forms. And anthropomorphism then becomes an aspect of our power as humans. An excellent example is the Tamburma House. This is a well-known example. You see the mounds outside of the house. They are used, they're called soul mounds, and they are used to make changes uh, both in and around the structure that will then affect the people who live in the structure. It seems that they have their own interpretation and understanding of this transaction that takes place between the exterior and the internal worlds. That making a change in the exterior world makes a change in the interior. Each architectural element not only looks to uh, be designed to emulate biological human anatomical forms, but also is labeled as such. Very interestingly, this gives this symbolic value to the, to the building, as well as its technological value. So when one enters through the front portal, one enters the house, 
also enters the body of the house. People sometimes will, you know, they'll greet, well, regularly they will greet through the, through the mouth of the house, greeting the house first before the occupants. Sometimes they'll drink beer with the house by pouring it through the portal. Anthropomorphic art results in an image that implies a combination of human and animal abilities. There is an imagining that occurs with anthropomorphic art that I think is a very important component of technological development. Ideas are first put forth sometimes in art. This is a regular occurrence in our modern world. It can be difficult, though, I think, to see it in more ancient forms. Images such as these, I think, are communicating technological development, even in its most nascent form. By imagining powers that are superhuman, it is the, the beginning of the process of development. Because again, to absorb the power of some non-human ent entity, the path is through technology. Solving problems for humans is done through building tools, yes? The ultimate human power is to process and rework the material world to manifest ideas. The immaterial becomes material. This idea realization is a very powerful process where the ordinary becomes the extraordinary. Extending the hands that were once used for digging, becoming shovels, becoming even more advanced equipment. This is a very important point because the advancement is the result, I believe, of this transaction, this iterative process of building and refining use and design. You'll see here on the right, the Lowenmensch figurine, the oldest known example of anthropomorphic art, at least to date. I think, again, implicit here is the idea that there is a combination of powers, the lion and the human. And our path to that power is through technological development and scientific exploration. Self-awareness is increased through the development and use of technology. Unknown aspects of the human body are explored through the use of technology. There's an old question, how does the tongue taste itself? How does the eye see itself? Well, part of that answer is technological. A very simple path. We come to know our thoughts through technology and our bodies. But ultimately, humans can only know their own experience of the world. To reduce uncertainty and increase predictability, people anthropomorphize. We are, in a sense, trapped within the world of our own senses. We cannot know what other animals think and feel. But to anthropomorphize is not a weakness or necessarily engaging in false beliefs. It is an attempt to engage our social competence, which is an important part of realizing our ideas through technology and development of the material world, its transformation. People actually are very good at engaging socially, communicating, and entering social contracts. I submit that anthropomorphism may have contributed to the development of language. If we think about language as having been developed um, through technology, which some people believe has uh, subscribed to the technological pedagogy hypothesis, that in old one tool making, people had to gesture and perform pantomime to 
translate and transmit the information about tool making. I think that uh, anthropomorphism may have helped in this process. A shared experience, we both have bodies, we both have these feelings, can then be possibly transmitted conceptually to other animals and then help us in communicating about third parties and communicate with each other about our shared experiences. So I see anthropomorphism as a process of testing, extending, and exceeding human abilities expressed through art initially and then uh, continued on through the process of technological development. Again, a process that is wedded with artistic expression and interpretation. As a component of language development, it would be based in shared experience and a form of teleological thinking in itself. After all, when we indicate humans and humanity, we're indicating teleological thinking. Everything for humans is means to an end. Projection of the human form more fully into technology is what we're looking at for the future. This resulting technology can be practical and socially relatable. Robots that serve humans and help them in many ways. And this approach brings new moral and ethical challenges. It's not simply a matter of applying old moral ideas and ethical principles, but developing new ones for new uh, variables. Inducing the phenomenon of anthropomorphism is used as a design feature. And I think this opens up the way for the uh, production of robots that reinforce human relationships, encourage social exchange, and advance ethical practices. Anthropomorphic patterning is necessary to solve the problems of humanity, but anthropomorphism may be replaced by a new pattern when artificial intelligence is applied to problems outside of the human realm, when artificial intelligence applies problems to itself, or perhaps to extraplanetary problems. Ultimately, the anthropomorphic form must be um, must be rendered obsolete for some problems. So we'll be able to anthropomorphize uh, mentally these, uh, these physical forms that don't look human. But the human form may be rendered obsolete as a useful uh, tool. Thank you very much.